Good afternoon guys, welcome to the class of CE331 Environmental Engineering 1 Lab. So, uh, today we'll discuss uh, on the experiment which is on determination of residual chlorine and chlorine demand, breakpoint chlorination basically. Okay. So chlorination, you know that this is one of the several methods of disinfection right yes sir disinfection we can achieve disinfection through several methods and several methods right we already discussed them and one of the methods are one of the methods is chemical by applying chemical and that's chlorination so what happens that when we add chlorine to water it gives us some compounds like hypochlorous acid HOCl and this HOCl gives us basically hypochlorite ion this hypochlorous acid and hypochlorous ion they are called free or available chlorine okay free chlorine free chlorine and they have the capacity to kill the pathogen they have the capacity to kill pathogens they are referred as free chlorine now the thing is in wastewater or that water which has which which contains uh, bacteria I'm sorry the pathogens we add chlorine over there to get them. Now the thing is, if this is wastewater, often, often this this contains pollutants, and these pollutants are organic pollutants. Many of them are organic pollutants. Now the problem of these organic pollutants is that chlorine which was supposed to provide HOCl and hypochlorite ion which were eventually uh, leveraged to kill the pathogens now this HOCl and hypochlorite ion instead of killing pathogens instead of killing pathogens now they will react with them that means your chlorine is being wasted. Am I right? Yes, sir. So we need to know how much chlorine dose we need to apply for a particular wastewater to achieve required degree of disinfection. So if you look at the chlorine added, chlorine dose added, and how much residual chlorine you get, how much residual chlorine you get. What is residual chlorine by the way? Residual chlorine is basically residual let's call it residual chlorine this one okay residual chlorine is the free chlorine that means this free chlorine plus free available chlorine plus uh, you can call them combined chlorine 
okay so both of them have the capacity <clears throat> to kill the pathogens now if you have pollutants in water first of all you are adding chlorine dose to the water you are adding chlorine dose but this chlorine is instead of killing instead of forming or killing the pathogens they will react with them so first of all you are adding chlorine but you are not getting anything residual chlorine is it clear so this is zero now after a certain time you start getting some of them okay and you get a curve which is shaped like this I already told you if you look at this graph we already discussed these things so here we don't get anything because chlorine is wasted by reaction with the with the uh, pollutants that's why they're calling in this range destruction of chlorine residual now after this range you are getting some residuals you know what happens when these organic pollutants right I'm, I told you that organic pollutants these organic pollutants uh, maybe are carbon hydrogen carbon carbon and sometimes nitrogen so okay so they degrade to give you ammonia and we have HCl, right? Where did this HCl come from? This came from addition of chlorine into the water. That's how you get this, right? So this HCl, instead of killing pathogens, now will react with ammonia to give you monochloramine. Monochloramine. And this monochloramine again reacts with another hypochlorous acid to give you what? dichloramine so monochloramine because one chlorine dichloramine because two chlorine and then again this dichloramine are guys are you following me this dichloramine yes, will again react with HCl to give you trichloramine yes, now the thing is read, think carefully this only these two mono and dichloramine has the capacity to kill pathogens but this trichloramine does not have the capacity to kill the pathogens that means this is wastage of chlorine am i right in terms of disinfection this is wastage what happens that at this stage in this stage this stage you get the mono and dichloramines but at this stage what do you get you get trichloramine now this trichloramine is wastage so that's why you're because they have to they don't have the disinfection capacity so this is decreasing now up beyond this point all the pollutants have been destroyed now whatever you give in as chlorine dose you'll get as residual so you'll get this like this clear So this is yes, called uh, breakpoint chlorine. At this point here, all the uh, organic pollutants have been destroyed. So that's why it's called breakpoint chlorination. Okay. So now our, in our in our experiment in our Sorry. experiment, uh, we what do we need to do? We need to determine this point. Now, how would you do that? You know, it's very easy. We need to plot this graph. If you can plot this graph, then you can identify this point on the graph, and you know, and the and the dose corresponding to this point C is the dose required for breakpoint chlorination. Yes, tell me your question. Sir, why we add ammonia? Oh, we are not adding ammonia, by the way. That's a problem. It remains in the wastewater. Okay. In the wastewater, it remains in the wastewater. Okay? Okay. 
that is a problem because due to this we are losing some chlorine am i right yes this is break point we need to determine this so if you want to plot this graph what you need to do you need to have this point you need to have this point right am i right yes sir so what you do you add chlorine dose chlorine dose so you have the wastewater sample okay you have the wastewater sample you have a big wastewater sample now you are adding in different beakers you're adding different beakers these samples am i right okay yes sir now you add chlorine dose at different amount chlorine dose one chlorine dose two chlorine dose three chlorine dose four okay and this is one two three four five six and once you add the chlorine dose you mix them you allow them some time and then you measure how much residual chlorine you have are you following me yes sir how much yes, sir. residual chlorine yes sir you have so if you know this point this points this points you can okay for chlorine dose one check for one what is the residual why so you can get these points am i right yes sir and you draw a base fit graph for example you got these points here like this so you draw a base fit graph like this and you get the uh, also the lowest point lowest point is here lowest one is here so this is the break point the point has the dose corresponding to this uh, point is basically the break point chlorination is it clear yes sir okay another thing is yes, we can have from experience i can t I, I will give you that what chlorine dose you need to apply and finally what you need to do you need to calculate the chlorine residual you need to determine the chlorine residual that's the thing that we need to determine the residual chlorine how to measure the residual chlorine how to measure it we will measure it using starch iodine method starch iodine method what's our objective here guys to calculate the chlorine after addition of chlorine dose after addition of chlorine dose what is the residual chlorine is it clear yes sir residual chlorine so as you can see place 200 ml portion of the water to be chlorine in each of 6 to 50 ml flasks that means you have six flasks here five six you add the sample sample a for example the one we need to determine the weak point chlorination for you add all in all of the six beakers how, how how much 200 ml in all of the six beakers how much 200 ml add required quantity of chlorine water stock solution stock solution means the concentration of the solution is known or bleaching powder bleaching powder money key chlorine huh? right yes sir okay in each of the flasks. so what you have done you are adding chlorine you're adding chlorine 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 once you add the chlorine you calculate the chlorine dose okay chlorine dose you already know now shake each flux gently and allow to stand for 30 minutes so you need to allow 30 minutes for each of the samples For in each of the samples, you need to allow 30 minutes. OK, 
okay to settle uh, to contact with the pathogens with the disin uh, disinfectant okay and after 30 minutes you measure the residual chlorine after 30 minutes you measure the residual chlorine in each of them one two three four five and six in each of the six flasks you measure the residual chlorine in each of them measure residual chlorine. Now, so what we are doing now, we are doing this now. Is it clear? Yes, sir. We are measuring the residual chlorine using the starch iodine method. So, what we do here is this. Chlorine reacts with iodide, reacts with iodide to form chloride and iodine. Hmm? Chlorine reacts with iodide to form iodine free iodine and chloride ion at pH 8 or less. Oxidizing power of free and combined chlorine residuals to convert iodine ion to convert iodide ion into free iodine, a key, free iodine molecule. Is it clear? Yes, sir. This chlorine can be free chlorine, that means HOCl or OCl, or combined chlorine, like monochloramine or dichloramine, this chlorine. If this is the free chlorine or combined chlorine, then it has the power to convert iodide ion to iodine and chloride ion. Now, the thing is, this iodine, if you can calculate this iodine amount or this amount, then you can calculate the chlorine amount. Is it right? Yes, sir. Okay. So our objective is to calculate the chlorine. Therefore, our objective is to calculate the iodine required here. Now, iodine <coughs> has a light yellow to red color. <coughs> iodine has a right light yellow to red color. Now, we will determine the iodine concentration by titration with sodium thiosulfate. Titration with a reducing agent. It is an oxidizing agent, it is a reducing agent. Okay? So, iodine net amount, we need to calculate the amount of iodine we need to calculate the amount of iodine. How? By using a reducing agent like sodium thiosulfate. How? Now, look, this light yellow to red color, whose color is this? Free iodine, am I right? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, if you add sodium thiosulfate into the water, this will form sodium iodide and sodium complex. Is there any free iodine available like this? No, sir. No. Therefore, would there be any light yellow to red color? No, sir. No. That means, this sample, after 30 minutes, you took this. Going on took this sample here, any sample, for example, sample one, took this. Now, what you have done? You have placed 200 ml of the sample in the Erlenmeyer flask, 
the two hundred ml of the sample after thirty minute uh, contact time, you have put it in an Arlen Mayer flask. Add about one gram of potassium iodide and two ml of concentrated acetic acid to the water. You added what? One gram of potassium iodide and two ml of concentrated acetic acid here. And concentrated acetic acid. Why acetic acid? Because this reaction takes place at a lower pH. So to reduce the pH. Okay. Usually three to four. That's why you have added what? Concentrated acetic acid. Fine. Now our objective is to produce our objective is to determine the iodine. So we will add sodium thiosulfate. So add 0 0.025 normal sodium thiosulfate that means Na2S2O3 drop by drop from a bullet until the yellow color almost disappears so with a bullet you add now sodium thiosulfate to this bullet what would happen you have you had iodine you had iodine which is yellow or red color now due to the addition of sodium thiosulfate this iodine will convert to what sodium iodide am i right sodium iodide and sodium complex so so do you have free iodine here no sir no so yellow color will disappear that's your end point. Yellow color will disappear. That's end point. Am I right? Yes, sir. Okay. Easy. Now, there is a catch here. The catch is this yellow color, basically, with addition of sodium thiosulfate, it becomes faint, light, light yellow, light yellow, 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 and eventually it disappears. So it's difficult to identify. It's not like a pink color just disappears. It's easier to identify. But here, this yellow color is gradual, so it's difficult to identify the endpoint. Therefore, what we do is, when previously there was iodine, it was yellow or reddish. Now, with the addition of sodium thiosulfate, the color fades out. That means fades away. It becomes light color, light, light yellow, light yellow, almost no color. At that time, since it's difficult to identify, what we do is we add starch. We add starch. Remember, you have a very small amount of iodine here. That's why you have light yellow color. Am I right? Yes, sir. So that small amount of iodine, which is still available, that reacts with the starch to give you the blue color. Okay. Okay, sir. That small amount of iodine combines with starch. You add one ml of starch solution to give you the blue color. Now it's clear that it's blue color. Okay, fine. Now you continue addition of sodium thiosulfate. What happens? Even the small amount of iodine which was present now will be converted to sodium iodide is there any iodine at this point no all are gone therefore this complex will break down and blue color will disappear am i right yes sir okay that means that's the end point that's the end point is it clear yes sir so why did we did we give did we add, uh, did we add a starch just for the just for an aid to the detection? So it forms so that it forms a blue color, and whenever the the last iodine is transferred to iodide, we know by observing the sudden disappearance of the blue color. Okay. 
So continue addition of sodium thiosulfate solution until the blue color just disappears. Record the quantity of sodium thiosulfate solution added. That's it. Clear? Clear, sir. So residual chlorine is related to the iodine amount and iodine amount is related to the amount of sodium thiosulfate added so residual chlorine equals to milliliter of 0 0.025 normal sodium thiosulfate used into multiplying factor what is the multiplying factor normality of sodium thiosulfate what is that guys 0 0.025 normal so 0 0.025 0 0.025 into equivalent weight of chlorine what is that molecular weight of chlorine that is 35.5 what is the valency of chlorine by the way huh what is the valency of chlorine guys one am i right Sir. molecular weight equivalent weight equals to what molecular weight divided by valency molecular weight divided by valency molecular weight is this and the valence is 35.5 okay yes sir so 35.5 into 1000 you have a meter of sample taken how much sample you have taken guys 200 ml this is 1000 so whatever the value you get, this is a multiplying factor. And for example, from the bullet, how much sodium thiosulfate you have added in total? 5 ml, 6 ml, whatever it is, this will be given here. If it is 5 ml, then 5 into multiplying factor, whatever it is. Clear? That's the residual chlorine milligram per liter. Now, what do you do? You do this for sample two, three, four, five, six, and therefore you get this table. You get this table. Now you plot this. Okay, this is chlorine dose. And this is residual chlorine. So you got the points. Maybe you got the points here, here. So like this. This is the break point. This dose is the breakpoint chlorination dose. Clear? Yes, sir. So you need to plot it, okay? And find out. So this is a uh, breakpoint here, the lowest point here. And the chlorine added, if this is corresponding to this point, if the chlorine dose added is 0.7, so the chlorine dose required for breakpoint chlorination is 0 0.7. Hmm? Yes, sir. So, that's all. Thank you very much. Any question, guys? No, sir. No questions. Okay, then. Thank you very much. Have a good one. Sir, attendance to sir. Safe. Yeah. No, sir, attendance to sir. Anything about questions? I, sorry, the lecture? No, sir. No, sir. Okay, then. Thank you very much. Have a good one. And stay safe.